Okay, so this morning we're going to have a look at this picture here by Stephanie Gent. We're going to look and see what we can do to make it better than what it is. There's, there's, I haven't practiced this beforehand, so we're just going to have a look at the picture and what we can do to make it better. This is a really cool picture. It's a beautiful little harvest mouse, fantastically in focus, sparkly eyes. It's on um, a thistle um, thing. I don't know what it's called, but I've forgotten. Uh, which is totally unnatural. However, the picture itself is really cool. What spoils this picture is somebody in the background. There's a lot of light and shadow, so the contrast is all wrong in it. It's all in shadow, so we need to work on it to fix it. So I'm just going to look and see what we can do. Um, so you just follow me along and then we'll go from there so if i was looking at this picture the first thing that i would do is try to remove some of this background stuff <clears throat> because it just doesn't work so how do we do that over on my panel my tools panel i can see lots of different uh, items um over here so what I'll be looking for is up in the top left hand corner, I've got this uh, brush, it's called a quick selection tool. If you use your quick selection tool, if you press on it, it gives you a number of different options. Um, for this particular one, I'm going to use this object selection tool. And all I've got to do is basically draw around my the object I want to isolate. In this case, it's the little mouse and this um, tweezel or twizzle or whatever it's called. So it gives it a couple of seconds and that will find this item, if you like. There you go. So we've got our selection, but it's not very good. Um, it's not on the side, it doesn't cover the little hair, it's kind of a general one. So what I would do in this particular scenario at the top of the page I have got select subject and select mask I'm going to go to select mask and what select mask does when it's ready it finds my selection and blanks out the rest of it it don't worry about the color the background that doesn't mean anything I you can change the colors if you like there's different ways to do it it just to me red stands out and it just makes it easier for me to see so i'm going to get in a bit closer i'm going to just zoom in you can see it's a bit bitty around the sides <clears throat> but this is a great tool because what this does it makes uh, it, it it tightens up that selection in lots of ways so you've got lots of different keys down here <clears throat> this refine edge brush that you can see over on the left hand side so this is like a brush with like a little hand it's not a hand, it's like kind of hair basically, but it looks like hand. If you select that um, and make your brush the appropriate size, and it could be anything that you feel comfortable with. <clears throat> so I'm going to go for something about this size. I'm going to go half on my subject and half in the red bit. And I'll show you why, because as I run that cursor around our little mouse, if you like, um, <clears throat> what that's going to do is going to define that edge. So now, instead of having a big block of selection, it's now done individual hairs, which is what I want. So I'm going to go all the way around, yeah, keeping to my subject. Yeah, it only kicks into action when you take your brush away. By the way. So if you miss a bit, just go back, just do it again. Okay. So let's just run this around here. It can be really quick. This isn't a this isn't a a long process at all. It's it's very quick. In fact, if I make it smaller, so I don't have to keep changing it. Yeah, you can see I can do it like this. Just go around my selection, and all it does it just defines that edge. A little bit better that's all okay so this is just a quick guide today we can go into more detail on this at another date 
but this is a this is a rough or oh, very quick guide to how to isolate uh, an item and it's not that important the important bit is this bit at the top so now that i've done that and i can if i zoom in i can see now that's a lot more accurate in regard uh, to my selection all i got to do is press ok and that makes my selection a little bit better so the way selections work like this everything inside my selection will be affected by my next actions so if i wanted to change the color if i wanted to blur that particular item it would only happen within the confines of these little marching ants however i don't actually want to touch this i want to touch everything outside of this yeah so i want to leave that where it is so what i'm going to do i'm going to go up to select at the top and i'm going to select inverse that basically turns it inside out that's what that does so that means now everything apart from my mouse and the tweezel will be affected by my next actions so what do i want to do i want to get rid of this person in the background one of our friends with big legs <laughs> however how can we do that well there's lots of different ways how to do that and so i'm going to show you some really simple stuff and again if we need to know more at a later date, we can do an advanced lesson later on. Basically, what I want to do is get rid of it. So I need to fill in that space. So how do I do that? If I go over to my lasso tool. That's probably not the right thing to do, to be fair. OK, so what I'll do, I'll go to my I'll go to this brush. So this is what they call a clone stamp. It looks like a little stamper. Yeah. And basically what this does, yeah, if I hold my Alt key, just press my Alt key, I get this little target, if you like. So with my target selected, and then click on a part of my image that I would like to copy. So I'm going to copy this little bit here. And that will move, that little target will move as we now move our key right now i've got my now i clicked it and i pressed that and i've got my target key i can now as a way of a brush start moving over that area now you can see what happened here because i'm moving maximum my little target moves with me so as i move my brush my little target moves so if i'm there my target brush is actually over here somewhere so it's actually copying this bit i don't want it to do that so you just keep moving your little target area yeah that's all you've got to do so just click change a little bit click change a little bit click change a bit yeah click change a bit click change a bit the reason i have made the selection is because i want to get close but i don't want to damage this little guy here so have because i've only Put my selection up there it basically means that it can what i'm doing now can only affect what's outside of there so if i go and press my clone stamp in here and then run it there it's not going to run and fill my mouse it'll do everything bar that yeah so this is a bit off-putting as well. So I'm going to carry on and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to fill all of this with a clone stamp. Yeah. You see where it's got this line running down it because my target has hit the edge of my image. So I'll just move that and carry on. Yeah. Do, do, do. Yeah. And I can change anything I want. Just do, do, do. Do. Right. Okay. Now we're starting to... Uh, cook with a bit of gas yeah just keep playing with it okay so now that's better so now that's put us in a better position now what i want to do is bring my picture back so to get rid of these little lines i've got to press Control and d which is for deselect now i've got rid of all the unsightly background information Let's put that back a little bit 
Yeah, so now what I want to do, if you notice that every now and again, I'll keep clicking over onto the magnifying glass. The reason being is that if I've got a brush, every time I move my cursor, it could change things. And I don't want it to change things accidentally. So if I go to the to the zoom button, it can't change anything. That's that's the only reason I, I do that, not for anything else. So it's not no hidden in secret. Just tidy it up a little bit. OK, back to the zoom brush so I don't affect anything. Now, we've got an image. What I need to do, though, is to bring this image out because at the moment it's still very dark. OK, so what do we need to do? There's lots of things we can do. We can go over to our uh, adjustment tools. And I could go to brightness and I could just use our brightness tool to bring this up. If I use our brightness tool, I can use a little bit of contrast. Yeah, just bring it out a little bit. So already that's starting to look much better. I can go back to my adjustment tools. I go to this thing that looks like a graph. Yeah. I'm going to click that. This is our levels panel. So basically this covers everything that's light, dark and in the middle. So the <clears throat> little slider button to the right of our levels dictates light. So if I move our cursor, our little cursor to the left, it brightens everything, yeah? If I move the one on the right, which is the dark, to the right, it will dark and everything. And the one in the middle does everything in the middle, in the in-between. This is basically your histogram, if you hear that terminology, a histogram. Now, the idea of a histogram is that your image, to be exposed correctly, you can't have any part of this graph touching this sidewall or this sidewall. If it is, it's either overexposed or underexposed. So what we need to do is to bring our cursor roughly, it only needs to move a little tiny bit, okay, to where our graph starts on both sides to get it away from the wall okay so you just move it away from there and the one in the middle which is our mid-tones you learn that a lot okay you can adjust to suit yourself so if i move that to the left it'll it'll brighten the mid-tones if i move it to the right it will darken the mid-tones so we need to because this is in the shadow we need to bring this out a little bit okay so we're going to move it to the left to bring out our mid-tones but not too much Now it's starting to take shape. Right. What we have, though, if I'm looking at this, we have a little bit of a conflict insofar as that this tool will affect the whole image. And really, as I lighten the, sh the, the mid tones or the shadows, I'm also lightening the shadows in our background, which detracts away from our main subject. So my thought pattern, as, as I did earlier, is to select our mouse and our tweezel. And I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. So I'm going to try a different brush. Okay, so this time I'm actually going to try and press where it says select subject. So I'm going to let the, the this very clever Photoshop, it knows our main point of subject. And what it'll do, if I press select subject, it will select that part of the image that, I, that that it thinks I want to look at further, which is our mouse, <clears throat> which is absolutely banger. So as I did before, I'm going to go to select and mask. We know what this is now. I'm going to go to our little tool, and I'm just going to go around just to get rid of those clumps of nothingness because it just makes it tidier, that's all. Get in between the little spines on our tweevil. Tweevil, I don't know what that's called. Yeah, because if I leave any green bits there, it stands out like a sore thumb. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. Uh, for what I'm going to do, I'm going to press OK. So that gives me our selection. Again, it's not that bit that I want. I want everything behind that. So I'm going to go on up to Select and inverse yep 
that comes up there. And what I want to do is just darken the background a little bit, yeah, just to take the effect away from, you know, to, to stop this being in the headlights. So I'll go to adjustments, and again, I'll go to my brightness button, simple brightness. It's not like exposure. People get confused between brightness and exposure. Exposure is basically the amount of, of um, light and effects the whole image. Brightness is a softer way of doing it. So it's much nicer, it's less, less harsh, if you like, and it's much better for something uh, like this. So I'm gonna go down and just gonna take that brightness down just a little bit. You can see it's just a tiny amount. It's all it needs. It's all down to you, whatever you want to do with your image. Now, I've darkened the background. I'll just take the contrast a little bit. and take The contrast button, by the way, is brilliant. It, it, you can put a lot of contrast. A lot of pictures look really good with high contrast, which is which is itself is really good. But sometimes you don't want that. So because it's the background, our image behind, now I don't actually want that in focus a lot. So if I take the contrast down, it actually blurs it just a little bit as well. So it just takes away from you know from what it is so if i take the contrast down just a bit you can see now that our mouse starts to stand out from the background so it starts it's isolated it oh. so it's isolated it from everything else great now what do we do you heard about layers about different things every time we do anything with our image it creates a new layer yeah, and that's all that is and a layer is just basically it's like a filter one on top of another yeah so as you create a new function or a, a new task it adds another filter on top of the one you did previously okay so i'm going to leave layers for another day because it's a, it's a brilliant thing to be able to use okay but not for this lesson or just get confusing right so all we need to remember is that our background so if you look at your layers panel on the right our background is our main picture and that's what we keep going back to so if i click on our background everything i do now will affect our picture yeah as it is so what do i want to do next well there's a couple of things firstly I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it's shadow on this side. So it's slightly darker from about the middle. Just a little bit, if you look. Yeah, just a little tiny bit. So I, I want, I'd like to correct that shadow if I can. So I'm not going to get too complicated, but I, I, this is a really, really useful tool to understand. So in my background layer make sure i'm in my background layer i'm going to go up to it it says filter on the top and i'm going to go down to camera raw filters anybody who uses lightroom will understand this control if you like because this is a very stripped down version of lightroom the downside to using this, and it is only a very slight downside, it always goes back to your image without your layers. And I'm sorry if that doesn't make any sense, but you can see it's really dark. That doesn't look like our picture. Because on top of our background, we've now got brightness, we've got levels, and we got more brightness. Those things are not included in our camera raw image. So we can change that. All we need to do is go to our background layer. We press our right mouse click button. Yeah, we'll get this panel and we'll go to where it says flatten image or merge visible. So I honestly don't know the difference between the two if I'm being totally honest so let's just go for merge visible just the same thing basically closes all of those layers so that we now have a solid 
image. Now, if we go to camera raw, oh, wrong one. There we go. It's not what I wanted. Ah, oh, that's a pain when that happens, isn't it? So I'll have some pictures while we're waiting. I'll take forever. I pressed the wrong button, but I can't delete it. So it is what it is. Right. Okay. So let me cancel that. Right. Go back to where we are. Right. Now, what I'd like to go to is filter, camera, raw filters. Yeah. Brilliant. Sorry for the uh, interlude. Right, now when we look at our picture in Camera Raw, it's exactly the same as what we're looking at in Photoshop. And if you remember, what I started off by saying is that I want to create a slight shadow on this side of the image. So if I pressed, if I was to control the brightness at this stage, it would brighten everything. So it would brighten this side and this side, brighten everything, all one go. But I want to try and what I want to do is take away the shadow mainly on this side of our little mouse and our little tweevil thing. So, this is a great tool um, in Camera Raw Filter, and it's this little square box, you can see it's called a graduated filter. And it basically means it's a graduated action. So it starts off strong and gets weaker, which is exactly what we want it to do. We want it to be, we want it to be uh, strong this side and less strong on this side of the image and in this particular case we're talking about shadows so if I click on this graduated filter uh, you'll see how this works it basically gives me it allows me to draw a line where I want my filter to start and where I want it to finish it doesn't do a, a small area it would be across your whole image so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this across. You can see, I just like you've got to keep keep you keep it pressed down. Yeah. So I'll show you again. So we press my graduated filter, click and hold, and then drag your line across your image in any direction you want it to be. Where you know where you want it to be strongest. So I just want it across there. And you can see there, there's a red button and there's a green button. Basically, that's where it's going to be strong and that's where it's going to be weak, whatever we decide to do. So I just want to change the shadows. So I'm going to go to my shadows and I'm going to brighten my shadow. So it's going to be brighter this side and not so bright that side. And I'll show you how that works. So all I'm going to do is take that and increase the shadows it's very subtle but in this because it's subtle i'll have to take it right the way up but you can see straight away yeah and it gives you an option to look before and after yeah it's not it's not massive change but it's enough of a change yeah to make it stand out so it's a better picture okay now I'll press ok to save that right now it's starting to look much better so now we've got a completely new image to work with from now on everything is down to your own preference what you do next what I like to do is to bring out some of the colors okay so in my adjustment panel I'll go to hue and saturation I could leave it on master and ramp up the colors yeah but i'll be honest with you that's not a really great thing to do i like to take control so by taking control that means i'll take every individual color one at a time and change the color so it doesn't need much okay so i'm going to go if you click on where it says master it gives you the colors to choose from so i'm going to go i start at the top work my way down so on the reds, let's say we red zoom, and I'll just increase it until I think it's better or worse. And you can see it's 
miles away it's there. And I could even take it down if I wanted to, if I think it's unnaturally red, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do in this case, actually. I'm going to take it down to about minus... I'll take it to minus 9 or minus 8. Yeah, because that just looks more natural. Now, yellows, you'll find yellows is interesting because yet most of this you look at and think it's green. But it's kind of funny because most grass and things like that is a combination of yellows, greens, and kinds, but it's mostly yellows. So if I take my yellows and increase it, you can see it's, it's the grass behind that's affected more than anything else. So... Again, in this scenario, I'm just going to take that down just a little bit because I think it's a bit more. I could increase if I wanted to, yeah, but I'm gonna. I'm actually going to take it down just a little bit. And the cayennes, I'm going to. I'm going to miss out the greens completely. To be honest, I'm going to go for cayennes, and if I was to ramp the cayennes up, doesn't make much difference on this particular bit of grass. To be fair. And um, blues, again, better or worse, doesn't make much difference. And there's not really any magentas in this image, but just just to make sure, slide in now. Okay. So now we're, we're getting towards an image that I really are starting to like, if you like. So just to finish this off, I'm just going to have a little look at the crop on it. Now, when people crop pitches, they tend to crop it to make the picture look really good. When I crop a picture, I always because I'm lazy, I always crop a picture to the size of the print I want to print later. So because I'm lazy, as I say, I kind of print everything or crop everything to A4 because I buy A4 printer paper. A4 is a good big size, it's a big size, so it works for me. My picture frames I buy are A4 size, so why wouldn't I crop my picture to, to that particular size? So that's what I'm going to do, just in this scenario, just to show how it's done. Okay, so I know this picture's already been cropped um, already, but I'm going to crop it again. Okay, it's good enough quality. That if I zoom in, it's still going to retain the sharpness. So I'm going to crop it to A4. Now, working on the rule of thirds, yeah, I could really take that down a little bit. If I was to take that down and like kind of, but you lose your tweezel, so I'm just going to leave it where it is. Yeah, but just keep that in mind. And move it to the right, obviously, move it to the left. Now, normally, I would suggest that you always have these things over to one side or the other because it just looks better. But in this particular case, this little mouse is right at the top of this little tweevil. And um, it would look odd. If he was looking left, I would move him to the right. If he was looking right, I'd move him to the left. But in this particular case, he's looking right at us, so right in the middle. I'm going to take that and I'm going to crop it. Just going to accept that. Okay, I'm just going to take the zoom and put it into a uh, fit the screen. Um, and that's it. That's done. So as an extra little lesson, if you like, um, some people want to know how I present some of my images um, using the drop shadow and stuff. So... Um, if you want to turn off now, that's great. Just go ahead and turn off. If you don't and you want to learn how to do the drop shadow, I'll show you that now. Okay. Right. So, to be to do a drop shadow and do a little bit of background, this is what I do to give you that background. Firstly, I'm going to go over to my background layer. I'm going to click it. Right click it and I'm going to flatten my image because this works where you've got a completely flat image. So this is our fin finished image, which I like now. It's much better. What I want to do is convert this to what they call a smart object. So if I right click it again and change that to a smart object. 
I'm not going to baffle you with science today about smart objects and all that stuff because it's too much. All I'm going to say to you is what a smart object basically does, it retains the quality of the image when you make it bigger or smaller. You've all seen images that when um, they're of low resolution so that when you make them bigger, they start to pixelate and they actually kind of look blurred and they don't look as good. So things that you download off the internet is a good example because they're all small images anyway. If you convert it to a smart object, it retains that quality when you make it bigger. So it just makes the picture better. And that's what I'm going to do because this particular image, I'm just going to put it on a A3 size background because um, it's bigger and it's better. So if you were doing a poster, A3 would be better. So it's now a smart object. This is where it gets a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to go up to File and I'm going to say New. So I'm going to open a new image, basically. So in in if when you press New, this gives you a whole load of preset type canvases. Uh, you can make your own. I made this one A3, and all, it basically go on the internet. Find what um, size in pixels A3 is and then just make one and then save it. And then, you know, you can call it whatever you like. So this one I've called A3. So that's easy, isn't it? So it will default to portrait. Um, but you can, I can just turn it over by turning it to landscape. But we want it portrait anyway. So... And I'm also going to change it to 16 bit because I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to keep high quality, high definition. So that gives me a blank canvas. That's basically all it is. And I go back to our picture. Now, again, if you look up here, you can see that whoever's taken this picture has taken it in what they call 8 bits. That's automatic. I think that does that automatically. So you can change that. So I, every single time I get an image, really, the first thing that you should do, if you want to keep your quality, is go to where it says image, go to where it says mode, and then change that to a 16-bit channel. That basically means you'll watch. You can see that all of a sudden that will go from... Um, hold on, let me just go back. Let me go back and I'll show you because this is this is quite cool. So I'll go back to eight bits. Yay! All right, hang on. Document so. So I can see uh, this document is was taken at um, twenty four meg. Perfect. Well, if I change that image to 16 bits, now convert that to 49 or 50 meg picture, which means that I can blow that picture up much bigger. So if I wanted that as a, as a canvas, yeah, I would lose none of um, our quality, none of our um, sharpness or anything. Okay, so I'm just by changing it to 16 bit. 32 bit is too big for the normal laptop. I could put it on there, but it wouldn't really make any difference to us at all. It changes things a lot. So I'm just going to leave that 16 bit. Now, what 16 bit does actually changes the colors a little bit, okay, because it's now more intense. But it hasn't changed our picture. Um, enough to, to worry about it too much so just for now I'm just going to go back and just going to give it a little bit more vibrance yeah because you, you, you're what you're basically doing is saying you've got so many pixels per inch now you've got twice as many pixels per inch so um, it, it changes some of those settings just a little bit if I had changed that at the beginning 
it wouldn't have made any difference because we would be working in that in the first place. We would be working in 16 bit to start with, but we haven't, so I'll just change it back. So all I've done increased the vibrance a tad. So I need to close that up again, merge visible. And I need to go back and I convert it back into a small filter because I've merged visible, it took it. It's changed it from being a smart object. So I want it back as a smart object. Cool. Okay. Right. So we're back now. So what we've got, we've got our image at 16 bits. We've got our canvas, A3 size. What we want to do to make this nice, what I've been doing of late is colouring our canvas. So instead of you could just have a white canvas if you want, but what I like to do is just to add a little bit of something to kind of blend them in. So if you look up and see, you've got this little eyedropper tool over on the left hand column, I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and I'm going to select a colour in my image. So in this particular case, I kind of like this green colour. Yeah. That's all, that's all I need to do, just click it, nothing else. And then I'm gonna to go to my blank canvas. Because I the, the green color I selected has now appeared, so where I would normally have a black and white box here, I've now just got this little green box that's automatically just appeared because of my eyedropper tool. Right, I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my adjustment tools. You've got different tools. So you've got this half, half, you've got this circle, which is half black and half white. So I'm going to click that one. And that just gives me an option. I could go in and choose solid color and it would change everything to that green color. Yeah. But I don't really want that because what I've been doing, I go there and I go to graduated tool. Yeah. That way, like our graduated filter earlier. Okay. It's darker and it fades away to light. So it's a really nice effect. Then I'll go back to our little mouse. I'll go to the top left hand corner. You can see this got this little move tool. I'm going to click this move tool. Yeah. And I'm going to go to our smart layer, our smart object layer here. And all I'm going to do is click and hold and then drag it up to our new tab. Still got it hold, still holding it against things. I'm going to take it there and drop it in. Bingo. Okay. And then I can move it around. Now, our image is still there. So it's done. That image is done. We can save it as it is, which I would suggest you do. So you save that because that's your main print. That is your image. All we're doing here is dressing up. To show on the internet okay that's all we're going to do make it look good so when we've got our image um i have got some um things that i have so a view and it's got margins and all that stuff you have to have a play with that so I'll basically move it till it's in the middle then i'm going to go down to our panel where it says fx so over in the layers panels right at the bottom fx i'm going to click that and right at the bottom it says drop shadow i'm going to click that yep what this is if you look it basically puts a shadow around your image now it always starts at 90 degrees but if you do mitres and stuff like that you'll understand that it's not 90 degrees is it it's 45 degrees that's what you really want that's what you're aiming for you can change this whatever you like but I found 45 is good, so I'm going to change that where it says angle to 45 degrees. And then I'm just going to click OK. So there's our drop shadow, so it looks tasty. Now I'm going to go back to the layer, make sure I've selected the layer. I'll press Control and the letter T. Yeah which then is basically like my move tool. Well, it's a free transform tool, basically. And now I'm just going to bring this up. The reason why I changed it to a smart object is that when I make it bigger, so I'm going to fill this A3 size bit of paper or this canvas, it doesn't lose any of the quality. So I'm going to bring that down until, and I'm going to move it until I think it looks good. That's all. 
and I'm getting there and that kind of looks pretty cool to me I take a little bit more maybe well there you go look at that brilliant now who wouldn't be happy with that all I've got to do now is go up file export people make a mistake and go save save a copy save it to the file and then when they send things away to be printed it comes back and it's the colors all weird and horrible and they think oh my god what's happened there it literally is all down to how you save your image if you save as it doesn't save it as you've processed it so you need to export your image and export let me explain this export yeah make sure when you're exporting things you change it to jpeg that's really important and well there's all the settings there so you can see them yeah quality you want to change that to great uh, cool that's it and then i would export that to whatever file that you you want for this one i'll put it into uh, the general use and i shall just overlay it on another one because i don't save that one and press export ta -da. job done how does that look guys pretty cool so that's how i process uh, the image if you like so i'm going to look at how we started it's dark with the people in the background etc etc and now we're there so that's a bit of a difference yeah that's a bit of a difference as you can see so uh, i hope this helps as it's a video you can stop it rewind it and everything else um but well, I hope you've enjoyed that one. So um, I'm going to leave that one with you and call it a day. Thank you very much.